All right. Hello. Hello. How are y'all doing today? What's up, LaShonda? Hey, LaShawn. I know, right? LaShawn. LaShonda. Uh, LaShonda. LaShonda. <laughs> I have on the show today with me, singer, songwriter, composer. I don't know what is it is she does not do in the, in, the, uh, in the music field, but LaShonda Showfield in the house, right? On the with hey. me, Sean Speaks. How are you doing today? <laughs> I'm doing well. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be joined with you. Great. All right, I'm about to just yes. go in here and try to share it to my personal page. So give me way Okay. Back, and then we're going to get started. You know, you nice. got to share on this and go on that. You know how it is. Uh-huh. see. All right, here we go. So let me share it to my... All right. All right. LaShonda. All right. So we met on Clubhouse. Yes. yes. I love that app. I love that app as well. And, <laughs> and it's what's what's so interesting about Clubhouse is that we met, it's you don't see each other. It's all just talking, right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. our energies connected from talking. Yes. I love that environment. I love the fact that you are concentrating on the voice. You're yeah. concentrating on the essence of the person, not what they look like. Mm -hmm. And I, in my opinion, I think you connect with people in a, in a more broader, meaningful way. I agree. Um, and I feel like I'm seeing you for the first time, mm -hmm. but I feel like I've known you for a long time, if that makes sense. It does. No, it does. It does. It does. Yeah. I, I can still when, when we because I hosted a room, and it was uh, change your inner story, change your, your life, and you mm -hmm. came onto the uh, into the room, and then of course I brought you on the stage because you were you, I wanted to talk with you, and and mm -hmm. and just the energy, just the 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 stories that you were saying, and I connected mm -hmm. with them, and one story that really really touched me, right. We were kind of talking about how, you know, sort of our identity, how we see ourselves. And I want to know if you remember mm -hmm. this. And you started to talk about, you started to talk about your hair story. You remember that? Yes. 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 It's my hair story. And, and it's, it's an evolution. No, no. <laughs> and that's evolution. fine. But that's what connected. <laughs> that's, I, you know, because Sharita Franklin was on the, uh, she was on the call with us. And after you shared that story, she was like, Sean, that sounds like your story. And it was amazing how we never, I've never met you, never mm -hmm. uh, until that first time, you know, on that call, but yet your story was extremely similar to mine. Yes. Right. Yes. And so, and then I was it, I think we were just, we were just fast friends on Clubhouse uh, <laughs> from, from that point. But anyway, what I want to talk about with you, because you are a singer and you are I a am. songwriter and I on am. that on that, and I know that you are, because on that clubhouse call, I put you on the spot. Did I not? <laughs> <laughs> I said, oh, you see? Why don't you sing for us? Close us out with a song. Yeah. Remember that? Yes. And you, yes. And you sung for us. Now, of course, you know I'm going to have you uh, drop some. Of course. Got, got, got of a, course. Got it share, be my pleasure. Share some of that talent. <laughs> Share some of that talent. Now, I it you have favorite. a new single out called "Free to Love." Tell Free to Love. It. Tell us about that. Sure, it's um, it's actually an Afrobeat R&B hybrid, and I was fortunate enough to pair up with Namibian rap group okay. by the name of MIG, and they were gracious enough to join me on the track, and it was just. The things that they were doing was phenomenal. They were actually giving me authentic chants. So the essence of Africa is alive and well on that track. Oh, wow. Oh, now, could you give mm -hmm. us a, just give us a little, a little, little, uh, just a little bit so we can talk about it. Cause I love, I love, Jiggle. I love it. You make me feel brand new. I'm so glad I found you. You make it so easy. Free, free to love. You get me, I get you. It's so easy, free, free to love. And they're doing like the African chants, like yeah, Jigaqua, 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 Jigaqua. It's 
Yeah. Oh wow. It's really it's really cool. It's a, it's, it's, a, a it's an amazing kind of song. song. It's an amazing Thank song. You. Yes, it Thank is you. Very, it's a very, 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 very good song. I, I, I like listening to it. And you, you got a new one. You got a new one that you're going to be releasing. We'll talk about that a little later. Yeah. I want to know, because I connected with that song, Free to Love, right? You want to tell us a little about the, the heart of the song? I will tell you that I was in a relationship that just at the time exude the essence of love. And I wanted to express how I was feeling in that moment. You know, when you're, when you're in love with someone, the birds are chirping, the sky opens up, you know, everything is beautiful. And I wanted to express what I was feeling inside my heart. But when I heard the track, it had those African, you know, elements to it. And I said, wow, this is, this is something that I could really take to another level and bring in actual African elements. Yeah. So that's how that was born. And my producers, Chris and Conrad Rosser, they're out of Atlanta, two identical twins. They oh. were friends with the producer that knew the guys from Namibia. So just, you know, it's, it's nothing but, um, I, I, don't, I don't believe in luck. It's just divine intervention. Like it, everything divinely came together and they reached out to the guys they immediately said yes I sent them the track they performed on it I didn't tell them what to do mm -hmm. I just said this is what this is what I'm doing this is how I'm singing it put your own spin and element on it I don't want any influence whatsoever and LaShawn when I got the finished product I was like wow we got something here. We got okay. something special here. You do. And the only thing I did differently was I, I rearranged the order of how they were performing the song. Okay. So there were certain elements that they only did one time. And I was like, man, that sounds so good. I need to hear it again. You know? So I just rearranged the, the vocal performances and the rest is history. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And so this song, Free to Love, you can get it on pretty much any music. Apple. It's worldwide, worldwide distribution. I'm on iTunes. I'm on SoundCloud, Spotify, Tidal, you name it. Wow. You type it in wherever your, your favorite, you know, outlet virtually is and it'll come up. LaShonda Schofield, Free to Love, featuring MIG. And it's, it's pretty much everywhere now. Wow, amazing, amazing. Yeah. And I will drop a, a link to your link tree in the, awesome. in the comments. So for, for sure, so people can check you out and check some other uh, uh, music and things that you got going on. Yeah, now, appreciate you're, that. You've been in the music industry <clears throat> for a while. So kind of let's let's go back, right? So okay. you know now, right now, you you know, you got a, a, a great popping song, Free to Love, yeah. beautiful, beautiful, beautiful music out right now. Thank well, you. Let's, let's go. Let's go back. Let's sure. Go. So my music career officially began in 1995. Okay. I was managed by the famous flautist, Bobby Humphrey. Okay. And she would shop me around to the different record labels. We must have gone to just about all of them. Sony, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Jive Records, Uptown, you name it. We were there. But I feel like during that time, I was trying to be someone who was already established. You know what I mean? So I hadn't really set my identity in place. And, you know, what's the easiest way to try to get through the door is to be someone else. But that's really not the answer. Mm. And I had to discover through trial and error that that wasn't the answer. I was trying to be the, the brown skinned, Tony Braxton, you know, but they already have a Tony Braxton. So I'm walking in the door. I got the, the, the bangs and I got the little shortcut. I got the belt, the, the velour dress. Yeah. But that was, I was being someone that I wasn't. And I had to take a step back and really look about, think about who I wanted to be. And that was a, that was years in the making. You know, I was 
tried to be an artist, but I was also discovering my songwriter side. So I, at that time, was writing for Ryan Toby, okay. who went on to become a member of City High, and he had his own, you know, pretty pretty well established songwriting career that followed. So I went through a season where, you know, I was trying to get my foot through the door and I got my toe, I got really got my toe in the door. Yeah. But it just wasn't my time. And I, I, I retreated. Now, I was, retreated. It that, was it that, cause I'm listening to what you're saying and, and, I'm, and, I'm, and I'm, I'm loving the fact that you're, you made the connection that you were trying to be you phrase it as, you know, you were trying to be a Tony Braxton when they already had a Tony Braxton. Mm -hmm. You had not yet um, just taken on the, the, the singer, the singer who is LaShonda Shokir, right? Right. And so even though you were making headway, you were making some connections, you were getting some part of your body into the door, right. you were not getting into the door, but it was mostly right. because you were not showing up. And when right. someone that's in the industry, what, you know, what, what makes a unique artist is the unique artist, the artist right. being who the artist is, right? right? But like most singers who are trying to, you know, break into the industry, mm -hmm. they're looking out and they're saying, who's successful? Well, you want to be like whoever is the most successful. Mm -hmm. right? that, and, that, mm -hmm. and that actually makes sense, right? If, mm -hmm. if Tony Braxton is popping, then let me see if I can, mm -hmm. you know, especially- Follow you know, the blueprint. Follow the blueprint, <laughs> right? But the problem was the blueprint didn't fit you. No, right? not at all. If you're more soulful, the African beats, the, the I mean, just the the, the way you yeah. do the, the, the melody, all of that is just, that's yeah. your unique yeah. style, right? And, and, you know, it, one of the things about music or art is that it's actually timeless, right? Which is why yes. you don't have to follow someone else's blueprint, mm -hmm. right? You follow your own blueprint and then in time, right? What you offer, right? Becomes the thing that's in, right? But sometimes- Amen, yes. Sometimes when yes. we want, when we want to, to you know to to have it right and we want to have it right now we try to not be who we are we try to be who we think other people want us to be to get success right mm -hmm. and so uh, you sound like sound like you went on that journey now I went on that time, journey mm -hmm. I went on that journey and I remember having a conversation with Ryan mm -hmm. and I would play my stuff you know Ryan used to Brian used to give me tracks. I don't know whose tracks they were, but he would always feed me tracks to write to. And that was during the season where I was really honing the songwriting craft. Okay. But what he used to say to me was, LaShonda, these songs are for the future. And I was like, huh? He said, your sound is for the future. Those songs are good, but they're not, it's not time for them to come out yet. Mm. I know what he mean, means by that now. Yeah. Because the time is now. Yeah. But then it was like, you know, I was doing, I was doing really something unique that didn't really fit what was on the radio at the time. Yeah. I didn't get it then, but I get it now. Yeah. 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 But he yeah. always used yeah. to tell me that. Yeah. 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 It's, it's like, it's like sometimes I can remember like the, uh, the movie Five Heartbeats. I don't think I've ever seen Five Heartbeats. Right? Yes. And that movie, movie should have, you know, should have been a blockbuster when it first came out, but it was mm -hmm. just before its time. Now I can go back and watch that movie and it's brilliant. It's like, that's one of the most brilliant movies of Timeless. all time. Yeah, it was, it's a timeless mood. And that's how music, right? Music music can be that same way too when you're true to who you are as an artist. I still remember when, mm -hmm. when I first got into Jill Scott and it was like, nobody made music like Jill Scott. You know, it, it's, but it's like, that was just beautiful, beautiful music. And it was different. That's why you have to- And she was being to, herself. She was being herself. And I think that that's kind of- but it sounds like you you sort of kind of went through that experience as a musician, musician, right? You tried to do the blueprint, the blueprint didn't work. How long did when did you get disappointed? And if you did, how long did it take you to recover 
before you said, you know what? I am not going to give up on my dream of yeah. being. LaShawn, a that's song. a great question. That's a great question, girl, because honey child, I went through a season and a half, honey bunches. A season and a half. Because when I, I would play my stuff, Okay. And I would, I, they, they would be my demos and I would play them in the car and I would think to myself, oh, this is just, you know, a retrospective moment to view. And, you know, those were the days, you know, wow, that sure was fun. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I'm somebody's wife now. I got kids and I'm, you know, doing the regular nine to five suburban lifestyle you know and i went through that season girl i went through that season for about 10 years wow. um in my mind in my mind i saw my music career as something of the past mm -hmm. and i'm gonna tell you what woke me up okay when i say it woke me up it was like flashing lights like hello you're supposed to be doing that. Um, 2011, this would have been a year before my biological father passed away. Mm -hmm. I was watching something on television and it was like somebody had turned on a light switch and an alarm at the same time. Wow. And that voice, that inner voice was telling me, get your pen, get your digital recorder, get your paper and start writing. And I was writing like never before. I was writing in the morning. I was writing in the evening. I was writing in my car to and from work. I would wake up from uh, out of my sleep to write. Wow. So honoring that inner voice and I would write and I didn't even know like what I would be doing with the songs or if I were ever going to release the songs. It was just this urgency to write and because I'm very attuned to the business I would copyright my songs you know make sure the business aspect was taken care of but I was writing for about maybe three years or so and then I said to myself I made a commitment to myself mm -hmm. and I said I'm gonna do this I'm gonna do this and I don't care how long it takes to get these songs out commercially. I'm not going to stop. I'm going to continue to press forward. So I would go to the studio. I would record the songs. I would buy my, my engineers to work with. And I was on the pathway to releasing the songs commercially. Okay. Wash That Man was the first song I've released commercially. I had written that song a while ago. Wow. But for me, it was just such a great, um liberating feeling because I said wow this is the song I started with yeah so it makes sense for that to be the first song out the gate and I just I, I just made a commitment to myself and I think that's important for people to really understand the importance of especially when you have people telling you you can't do something mm -hmm. and I had those people mm -hmm. you know um I had to get to a place where I made a commitment to myself that regardless of what was going on around me, I was just going to focus on what I knew to be my purpose. Mm -hmm. Because I knew when that alarm bell went off, when those flashing lights were, uh, you know, were registering with me, I knew that that was my purpose being awakened. Yeah. So in that wow. moment, there was no turning back. Wow. There was no turning wow. back. Now, let me be 100% honest. Okay. <clears throat> Recently, oh, well, within the last two years. Okay. Okay. So I released Watch That Man. Mm -hmm. And then I had re released a song called My Rhythm, My Blues. Okay. So I kind of like, I fell in love. Okay. What happens sometimes when we fall in love? What happens sometimes when we fall in love? We get a little lost. 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 A little bit. A little bit. 
But I had someone that I didn't know. This is what kind of freaks me out to this day. I had someone that I didn't know. Okay. Didn't know me from a can of paint. Okay. Approached me and was like, you better get back on your task. You're, you're slightly falling off your task. And this is what you've been doing. And I'm sitting there like, how he know? But you said you already knew when, when he, he was saying that to you, you sensed that you had fallen off task, but because, oh, you, of were in, but because you were in love, you were actually kind of going back to that 10 years or so where you felt like, well, maybe the music thing is in the past. Now I got well, to I was look. still doing it. I wasn't mm -hmm. doing it at the pace that, that I should have been doing it. So I was still doing it. I was still promoting my songs. I was still performing, you know, when I needed to perform, but I had other things to do. And I felt like that was an alarm bell again, yet again, to remind me, hey, you're getting off, you're getting a slightly off task. Get back on, get back on the train. You yeah. got stuff to do. You had to recommit yourself back to your decision because I like what you said a lot, right? You had the 10 year period of time where you were kind of married. You kind of thought the music thing was in the past, right? And, 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 it, and it makes sense because there's some people right now that's listening or that will listen to the show that's, that's, a, that's desiring to sing, that's always had a passion to sing, and life seems to get in a white way, or life seems to say, well, that's a kid's dream. Now you're an adult, you're your wife, your husband or whatever, uh, you got kids, mm -hmm. forget about your dreams. But, mm -hmm. you know, but when it's, when it's your dream, right, when it's, when it's that version of yourself that you know that you are, but you haven't yet yes. manifested, right yes it doesn't, it yes. doesn't leave you you may silence it for a while other things may take more important role for a while but eventually your heart starts to beat for it again right? yes right and then yes. you go back to okay this is who I am I am a singer right I'm a singer who writes I'm a singer who shares right uh, and you remember that singing music it's art right? You release it, right? If you're letting it go, yes. you have to let that flourish and grow and connect with yes. people because it will, right? And then it sounds, seems like love kind of stepped in again, right? Got you a little bit off course, but yeah. that's okay. What I think it does, it gives you, it gives you more material to work with. Right. Oh, most definitely. Most definitely. <laughs> most definitely. Yeah. Cause I, I, I tend to write from a very authentic, organic place. Yeah. From the heart. You know? Yeah. Yeah. From, from the heart. I, I make observations about other people's stuff. Yeah. But you know, the best songs I think are the ones that you experience. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <clears throat> the, the, the ones that, you know, that really just come from that place, from that, from that heart place. A lot sometimes from a heartbreak, but not always, because sometimes yeah. it can be from a place of pure joy and happiness, per love, per connection. Uh, but it's definitely something that's from an experience, right? That's kind yes. of a universal experience. Right? Yes. Or or yes. a universal desire to be experienced. Yes. Right. And that's kind of what it connects. Now, what I like is that you knew you were kind of not as showing up in your hunger right and it was because you were in love now do you think that your love relationship got in the way of your hunger for your music or you I just, think so you think so now why <clears throat> yeah I think it, I think it did um because we tend to put energy into what's right in front of our faces I think okay and that I think was you know I was in a situation where I was fresh out of my my marriage and I went into a relationship rather quickly so you know probably didn't give myself an opportunity to really heal from the things that I was going through I was masking you know my pain um so I, so just by default I was putting a lot of energy into that relationship wanting to nourish it and something is going to take a back seat when you do that. Mm. And I think at that time, I just kind of had fallen off a little bit with the music. Um, 
And that person coming to me, that was the weirdest experience. I'm not even gonna lie. Cause I was like, where is this coming from? You're now, you're, you're talking about things that's you're in my bedroom now. Like, yeah. what are you talking listen, listen, about? Listening to your conversations to yourself, right? <laughs> because you knew, right. you knew you had kind of dropped the ball a little bit, right? Just a little yeah. bit. You knew it. Yeah. But at the, at the same yeah. time, you were in love and you didn't, yeah. you wanted to give that energy and attention to that relationship. Now, do mm -hmm. you think it's, you could have both? Or, you know, is it a priority? Oh, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I think you can have both. I think, but I think everything has to be in synergy. I think, oh, you know, okay. it has to flow. Yeah. And, you know, you know, things didn't work out in that department, but mm -hmm. I, but I truly believe in my heart that the next relationship will be that, that has that, you know, that interconnection and that synergy that's, that's that flows that's yeah because that's that's, that's, that's important that doesn't like, require I, that work because it sounds <clears> like what may have gotten your attention off of your music just a little bit was that you probably had to put a little bit of work or a significant amount of work in that relationship and that seems normal yeah. but when you put energy and work into trying to make a relationship last it kind of takes away the energy in your creativity, yeah, right? Because you're when you're does. trying to 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 make music and release music. You're tapping into, you know, a sort of that nothing place, and you're creating something. You're you're taking a a, a blank sheet of paper, right? That's and that's what it's yeah. And you're <clears throat> you're and you're writing a story to see, right? And so mm -hmm. and 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 that takes that energy and that effort and that attention. And sometimes you described it perfectly. Yeah. 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 You described it perfectly because as songwriters, we're basically telling a story that ne that's never existed and making you believe that it did. And yeah. we have to do that in a matter of four minutes or less. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so that's yeah. a challenge. Yeah. That's a challenge. <clears throat> yeah. When, I, when I hear a song that just takes me there and it's like, you know, it's almost like you for a minute, you're in the imagination of the writer of that songwriter, you're there, yes. it's, you know, and even though that story for the most part for the songwriter was probably in their imagination or in some variations of various experiences that they have, but it's like being able to synthesize that story in three or four minutes yes. that pulls in the listener, right? To an experience, right? Mm -hmm. You know, um, and that's the beauty of music. That's the beauty of art, right? Yes. And, Yes. Uh, now you not only operate on the musician side, you also have a music business, right? Mm -hmm. it's, now, what's the name of your company? It's three zero <coughs> nine, right? Three zero three zero nine music. Three zero nine. Yeah, it's three actually oh my nine. birthday. It's actually my birthday. Uh, okay, but it's three zero h nine. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. And on yeah. that, you not only will you release your own music, but you're looking for mm -hmm. artists, musicians. I and am. I think. I think my next artist is going to be a gospel artist. Okay. Okay. And he's uh, <laughs> out of Dallas. Artist, y'all. I know this is. I, know this is <laughs> I have someone in mind. Um, um, he's. He's on the, the cusp of getting that together so we can solidify that relationship. But yeah, I'd like to have a gospel artist on the roster with me. Okay. Um, because I write songs of deliverance as well. Okay, okay. And then, um, you know, our company, we licensed our music to films and also to playwrights for stage plays. Okay. You know, since COVID-19 has kind of, stepped in a little bit you know we haven't had the stage plays very active right now but but I do license my music for that as well wow mm -hmm. so you know now see that's you're an amazing woman because not only are you a musician songwriter yourself but you also are helping and developing other artists yes to to follow their to follow their dream right to, absolutely to live their greatest dreams because a lot of times we forget in doing life, right? That we have dreams that are just uniquely ours, right? Yes. Experiences that uniquely we want to have. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we forget about it because we get married, we have children, we have work, right? And so um, it's, a, and it's beautiful that 
not only did you make a decision to get back into the music business, you made a decision and a business decision. And what was smart about you is that when you had that, that inner voice urge you to start to write, yes. you didn't yes. fight yourself. I did you fight know. myself. And you did I not did. worry about, well, I shouldn't write this because I'm not sure if I'm ever going to use it. It wasn't even about what would come of the music. It was mm -hmm. about letting whatever that music was that was in you out. Yes. But sometimes yes. people have a habit of wanting to figure out how the outcome is going to be before they act. And we've got to learn how to act and let the outcome just come when it comes. Thank you. Hello. Come, right? Hello. That's how Hello. we have to do it, right? And so, and I think that it's so beautiful that when the that inner voice had you write, right? When you felt it, you wrote it. Even if it was writing it and putting it away, and you were, but you were even smarter. You wrote it and you copyrighted it, right? <laughs> oh, I don't play with that stuff. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because so that's, that's here's the here's the deal, Lashawn. I just recently found out that someone has used unlawfully one of my songs. Oh wow! I just found that out not too long ago. So yeah. it's the business acumen in me that protected me even in that situation yeah. because I have the certificate to litigate yeah. that individual, yeah, exactly. the cease and desist. Exactly. But yeah, I don't play around with the copyrights. Yeah. I'm all on that. <laughs> and you know, the thing is, is that that's, that's an example to us all because we're moving into an age where what you have on the inside, your ability to create content, whatever that content is for you, you right. have to start to do that, right? So mm -hmm. when you have that inner voice or whatever you want to call it, give you yes. something, right? Give you a, yes. an idea, give you a thought, give you yes. something to say. You need to start writing it down, right? Mm -hmm. Because immediately, you, immediately, because yeah. you may not necessarily be writing it for today, but like your like your uh, your uh, your producer told you, this mm -hmm. this is for the future. Yes, this is yes. for the future. I, that stuck with me. That stuck you know, with and, me. You know the reason why it's for the future because I always use this thing, and you've heard me say this uh, on the in the clubhouse. We have to move away from thinking linearly, right? We we have yes. this linear, linear linear view of life where we look at life and we're like, okay, the only thing that's going on right now is me and LaShonda on, are on this podcast. We're chopping it up, right? But this is just a linear view of life, right? But we have a panoramic view, right? Mm. There's something on this side of what's going on and there's something on this side. And I think mm -hmm. when we start to apply that to our lives in general, we say, you know what? I'm not going to take what's happening right now as if right. it's the only thing that there is. Because I know I'm going to have a panoramic view of life. And even though yes. right now my music is not connecting, tomorrow will come. Yes. Tomorrow's, tomorrow's will come. Yes. Right. right? Yes. And, and to what, what could not, what the, what the world could not handle or understand today, tomorrow they'll be flocking it. Right. And so eloquently said. <laughs> <laughs> Which is why you have to <clears throat> listen to yourself today and write it. So glad that I did that. Yes. Because I know those songs back then have a home. Yes. And I don't have to, I don't have to recreate the wheel. They're there and they'll be ready to go. Yes. That was the purpose of being obedient to the voice and acting on that because. I did the work already. Exactly. Isn't that mm -hmm. what they say? What's that saying about opportunity, right? Um, when, when, when opportunity meets you when you're ready. When, when, like, when you're ready. When you're oh, ready. yeah, 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 yeah. Something yeah. like that. But you have yeah. to always, you have to be ready, right? right? You can't say, well, when opportunity comes, I'll get right. it. Right. You right. have to always constantly be ready. And then right. as, you're, as you're being ready, it's not that opportunity is coming to you. You're actually creating opportunity from your readiness, right? Mm. <laughs> right? That's, that's, that's creating accurate. the opportunity from your readiness. And, and, and that's the thing that I'm even learning with just what I'm doing. It is like you're connecting with people and you're talking mm. to people. And it's like, okay, I, I try to stay ready. I'm ready even when I'm not ready, right? I'm yeah. going to pretend yeah. like I'm ready. Yeah. But you, it's, a, it's about 
that's how we create opportunity. I, I think you get tired of looking out in the world and wondering why opportunity always come to other people. And I'm, I, I switch that now. I don't necessarily think the opportunity is always coming to other people. I think other people are listening to themselves and they're standing up and they're acting and making a decision based upon whatever information they have, but they're making a decision now, right? Mm -hmm. And then when we look at it later, we say, man, they make perfect decisions, right? And, and then we started, and in, or, in order for us to make a decision, we want it to be perfect. Well, they made a perfect decision, but their decision wasn't necessarily perfect, right? Right. They made a decision, followed on that decision. And then when it was time mm -hmm. to pivot, they pivot. When it was time to make a change or an adjustment, they made a change or adjustment. They mm -hmm. didn't make the decision thinking that this decision was a gonna was was be, gonna be the only way to get there. They just knew that they wanted to get mm -hmm. there, right? Just like when you, right. you know you want to have a music career where people hear and listen and share and enjoy your music. You know that that's mm -hmm. the end that you're wanting to get to, right? Right, right. right. And so you made a decision that you're gonna take a path to get there. Now you yeah. may have to take the airplane. You may have to then get off and take a bus. You may have to then get off and take a train. That's the pivot. Matter. That's the pivot. Yeah. Right. That's a pivot. Mm -hmm. But it mm -hmm. has nothing to do with the decision. You have to first right. make the decision. And I think that that's yeah. it. It's like you made a decision to live your dreams, and you yes. are doing it. And then you're creating opportunities for other people. Yes. And that's where I want to get to before we close out. You in that ten year period of time. You could have came back into the music industry and you could have still been waiting for someone to choose you. Ooh. But you I have decided this to choose yourself. And you have a phrase for that that you like to say. What's that? Yeah, phrase? I have a phrase for that. My phrase is don't be a pick me, Sha. Don't, don't be wait a for pick someone. Me. Don't be a pick me, pick me. Don't be a pick me, Sha. You know, create your own lane build your own table, you know, build your own table, do it well, do it yes. in a spirit of excellence and they will come. Yes. And that's the attitude. That's the attitude that I take. And, you know, I teach other people in, in leadership is don't wait for someone to put you on because not everyone's going to see your vision. Not everyone is going to buy into your concept and they don't have to. Don't it's have not to. for them to see it. You need to see it. You need to be your own visionary. And I have this other thing too with me, like I am a movie and I've already seen the end credits. I'm just rewinding the movie back to where I'm at right now. I already know what the end looked like, but I'm now doing things and putting things in motion to eventually get to the end credits. That's a visionary, in my opinion. That, that, no, that, that's having a panoramic, panoramic view. That's the panoramic that's view. That's the panoramic right. view. And, and I think that if we, you know, when you really get that, you're, you're not swayed right or left about how other people respond to you because you know that it's not about that. It's about, you saw the end credits. You saw LaShonda Schofield. How, you know, whatever that you wanted it to be. You saw that, right? Mm -hmm. You made a decision, right? And, and you made a decision and you already in your own imagination saw the, all of what you're going to do to get there. Yes. Right? Yes. So now you have to come yes. back here and now you got to walk it out. That's right. You got to sing That's it out, right. right. That's right. You got to right. present it out. You got to connect it out right? Mm -hmm. You got to not be scared, right? Now, don't get mm -hmm. me wrong. I am not saying that you won't be scared, but you got to act in your fear. So it used to be for me alone. Yeah. For me, fear used to be so crippling, right? Like mm -hmm. crippling, like just crippling. And, mm -hmm. and it was always because I thought I had to fight the fear. When I fight the fear, when I fight the fear, when I finally beat fear, I will act. That was my thing. When I beat fear, I'm going to act. But guess what happened? <laughs> Over time, I realized fear was never going to go away. It was just never right. going to go. So then I had to come to a point of saying, okay, fear, you're never going to leave me, are you? You are mm -hmm. never going to go away. 
So I'm going to mm-hmm. have to just learn to take you with me. So mm-hmm. now I just take fear with me. I'd be scared crapless, but I got to show up. I used to be afraid to perform in front of people. And I think Toastmasters, I used to be a member of Toastmasters. Um, and Toastmasters taught me to just imagine everyone naked. <laughs> and, oh, and that's been like my thing you know ever since i i perform i sing i just imagine everybody naked and what what is it to be afraid of it works yeah but people people connect when you sing you know um so once i once i've realized that people really do connect with your voice people really want to experience you in that way that took the fear away as well because I was one of those really shy kids my mom would ask me oh my god yes my mom would ask me to sing and I would clamor up like I don't want to do it and she would force and make me sing so I had a fear you know because I was being forced to do it but what I used to do is I would go somewhere by myself when I didn't think people were watching and I would have these imaginary concerts Oh, wow. by myself singing Tina Marie songs or whatever songs were in my head yeah. at the time. And one time I did that, my, my aunt was in the window watching me the whole time. Mm-hmm. She let me go through my whole imaginary concert. And then she just looked and I was like, oh crap. <laughs> and how, how old were you at the time? I was probably like nine, nine, nine or 10. Eight, eight. To me, that's such a great story because you were nine having an imaginary concert. Yeah. And a full concert. A full concert. And then as an adult, right, you have concerts, right? Do you see how your childhood dreams, those are indications of who you are, of of that, of that passion, of that process for which you are here, right? Yes. And we have to not yes. allow life to take that away from us, right? Yes. You know, go back. Yes. So as I tell people, just take a moment and think back to when you were a kid. What was it that you thought that you, what was that impossible thing that you mm-hmm. thought you could do that you didn't even characterize as impossible? See, we mm-hmm. think about it when you, when you go back to, which is something we're going to be discussing on the clubhouse tomorrow. <laughs> right? when, you, when, you, when you think back to those things as a kid, you didn't characterize mm-hmm. wanting to be a singer, wanting to be a writer, wanting to be the president or whatever. You didn't see that thing as impossible, right? Mm-hmm. Life mm-hmm. and society and family, they start to tell you that that's impossible, right? And then the problem is we're so young and we're so impressionable, we actually believe it. And so all of a sudden we yeah. adopt impossible in the place of who we are. Yeah. And then now you got to try right. to dig out the impossible and connect back to who you are. Because yes, who you right. are is always possible because you're here. You're That's here. Right. You have the talent, the gift, the skill. And if you don't have the talent, get the skills, there's ways of getting acquisition yes. skills. Right. And so, um, it's just a, it's just a, it's just a beautiful thing when you can connect to your dream and then you can give yes. to other people. And so it's very freeing. Uh, it's yeah. very freeing. Like my heart, I feel like my heart is, uh, is in the, in the best place ever because I am acting on why I'm here. If someone asked me, asked me today, why are you here? I know why I'm here. And that's, that's a beautiful state of mind too, because a lot of us don't know why we're here. We, we're trying to figure it out. We're trying to, or we're just going through life day to day and it's passing us by. And I wanna live a life of significance. I wanna, I wanna live an extraordinary life. Mm. I wanna leave a legacy for young females. I wanna leave a legacy for people, men and women who think it's over for them that feel like, you know, I I can't pursue this because there is no because you just make up in your mind to do it. And you don't let anything or anyone deter you or stop you from accomplishing your goals. Mm -hmm. And that's really the, that's the biggest takeaway for me was to just 
execute, well, first formulate a thought and execute. Yeah. One foot in front of the other. That's and right. I made mistakes along the way. Of Don't course. get it wrong. I mean, you know, I'm trying to work out a situation now where I made a little boo-boo. But you live and you learn. You learn things when you need to learn it. And so even in that, you know, in business, we make mistakes in business, but we learn from them. We pick up the pieces. We figure out how we need to fix it. And we move on. Yeah. And that's where I met with that. So I can honestly and definitively say to you, LaShawn, that I am a singer songwriter. I am the owner of 309 Music Group and I will acquire and win Grammy Awards because I've already seen my awards. When I close my eyes and I extend my hand, I can envision the feeling of having the awards Actually, I envision having them in my arms. <laughs> I'm gonna be right there. So like, yeah. I've, already oh, I've already connected to the feeling of having them. Wow. But so I know that they will come. And I've had dreams. Check this out. I had a dream. I was at the award ceremony. I was, I had approached the podium to give my acceptance speech, mm -hmm. but the lights were turned off. Oh, wow. So how I interpret that dream was, keep going. Keep You're going. going to get it. And then the lights will be on. Wow. Keep I going. love, love, love that. Because I, you know, you, we've had conversations off, uh, in the, offline and, mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm big at, you know, I've, I've told you of taking everything, yes. everything 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 dream anything you think is negative everything everything and using it as a puzzle piece for the picture you want to create for your life for the life you yes. want to live everything is useful but you have to interpret it as useful you cannot interpret yes. it as bad or it's it's against you right it's no you know what i this taught me this or you know what this fits here or this gives me a grander look at it this way you have to interpret everything in a useful way right because some people could have interpreted the lights off to be something negative right or they could have been like oh that's for me to stop no how does that use oh you know what in the darkness if i turn on the light you know something to make it useful and i know sometimes people mm -hmm. think well sean that just seems too simplistic and i'm not going to sit here and tell you that that it's easy right uh oh i think you're Oh, there you go. I think you, you cut out for just a second. Uh -oh. Say, oh, there you go. I said, I'm not going to say that it's easy, okay. but what it is, I'm here. is that it's training yourself to see life in that panoramic view, to understand that something happening today isn't permanent reflection of everything that's going to happen in your life, right? Thank you. Yes. All right. It's just, a, yes. it just, it's a, it's just the puzzle piece of the picture, right? Because if That's you, right. if you put puzzles together, right, if you look at one part, one little puzzle piece, it doesn't look like much, mm -hmm. right? So, but when you put it all together, it's like, it makes a beautiful picture, right? And I think right. the thing that you have just taught us today, it's about you deciding what that picture will be before you yes. even start putting it together yes right yes. that's that movie reel right that's that ending credit right mm -hmm. that's that grammy right lashonda mm -hmm. showfield grammy winner one two three however many times that's in your imagination for your life in your movie reel in your picture right and today what you're doing is you're just taking a step by step by step by step. This is how all great businesses, this is how all great musicians, this is how all great anything that we call great didn't necessarily start that way. Mm -hmm. They started off with a decision and a commitment to what, and a commitment. They, to what it is that they saw for themselves, their lives, and for others. 
Mm. Right. And so that and that's that's that is what you're doing. And so I'm just I'm I'm just glad to know you. <laughs> like, oh, <laughs> remember me? <laughs> you just remember that you came on show with on the Sean Speaks show with Sean Speaks and talked to her before you got all those Grammys. <laughs> you get those Grammys, come back, come back, come back. I'm just, I, I, you know, your voice is amazing. Uh, I'm Bless so you. That, yeah. um, agreed to come on to um, to the show and talk with us and share your story. Uh, because I know that I know for a fact that there are people out there, men and women, who mm -hmm. desire to to be singers, musicians, songwriters, and they are they are sitting on the stump, waiting as a picnisha. Yeah, and don't I, wait, don't, don't wait, wait for someone to pick you. Yeah, because if I if I continued that mindset, I wouldn't be doing it right now. Yeah. You know, I was like, oh, someone's got to give me a deal. Oh, someone's got to give me a publishing deal. Like, no, put yourself on. Exactly. You know, you can be put your own publisher. On. It's not that hard. Be your own right. publisher. Be your own publisher. Right. Be your own publisher. Yeah. And if you don't know how to publish, give me a call. Let me connect with you with some people. You can. Okay. There is so many. Yeah. There's so many avenues now to be all the things that you thought you needed middlemen for. Thank you. Right? You, need Thank a, you. you don't need a publisher. You don't need an agent. You don't need a this. You. you don't need a that. You can do it yourself. Or you can connect with people like you that's going to say, hey, I'm not trying to be, you know, RCA for you. I'm going to mm -hmm. be a partner with you, right? Mm -hmm. A partner in the creation of the life that you want to live, mm -hmm. right? You know, and that, there's I'm freedom. Saying, there's yeah. freedom. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. And so, I enjoy the freedom. Yeah. Course. it's a it's a liberating place to be yeah yeah well so. no I want you to close <laughs> out I you know I I, I, I just love freedom I actually love your your uh your the the new one that you have that you uh, that you only have a clip out I love I love that mm -hmm. I like, okay I can't wait to use the no out. grown voice yeah, yeah. okay can yeah you, I, I released a snippet of can you can you give us oh a, no what were you gonna say can you give us a snippet of that um let's see um I am tired of stroking your ego. Bye. It's time I bring myself back to life. I'm not gonna chase ya. Battery is charged. It's hi, 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 hi. Keep going. I'm going to play the love. love. I absolutely love that. Oh, I can't wait for that one to be released. I absolutely, I, I really, really do. I love, love, love that song. Okay, one more clip. Give us a clip of free to love again. And this and that now. You follow the rules, did not jump ahead. Had to make it sure, 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 not off on my bed. You're such a gentleman to cut from the rest. And it's important I get to see your best. <laughs> LaShonda Shopee, <laughs> go check her out. Free to love on Apple Music. I have already got my copy. Yay. I cannot wait for, uh, uh, what is the, the, the one that hadn't come out yet? Grown, no Grown Boys. No allowed. Grown Boys. I, yeah. I just, oh, I love that. I love both of them. I love both of them. Yeah. Thank you so, so, so much for Thank you for having me. Show. I just, I love conversating with you. I think you are a great spirit. Uh, and just so super talented and I'm just so glad that you listen to that inner voice and you are following your dreams because I love to connect with people who are living their greatest dreams oh. it is in alignment with my mission which is for people to live their greatest dreams so when I talk to people who are doing that you know that is what I bow to and I bow to you so wow. I think thank you, thank you so for much coming on to the show Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. This is great. Thank you. And, so I'm, and I love the fact that you're now one of my new friends. Yeah. <laughs> yes, same here, same here. Well, thank you so much, Miss <laughs> LaShonda Schofield. Check her out. Now, you know what? Before we get go, tell us, tell the people how they can connect with you. I'm definitely going to link your link. Oh, yes, most definitely. But what about your Instagram, mm -hmm. Facebook, et cetera? What's your handles? 
I'm on Instagram, LaShonda Schofield. It's L-A-S-H-O-N-D-A-S-C-H-O-F-I-E-L-D. Okay. I'm also on Facebook as LaShonda Schofield. I'm on Twitter at Dat Girl Can Write, D-A-T-G-U-R-L Can Write. Dat Girl is my pseudonym. Oh, so I most people it. know me as that girl. Ooh, <laughs> that girl that I like that girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. so I kind of play on that. Like, um, what's that song by uh, Madonna? Um, Who's that girl? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> well, that's what you keep saying, child. Like, keep Who's that girl? So, yeah. I'm that girl, but I'm also, you can find my music on www.lashondascofield.com. Wow. <laughs> cover all the bases, cover all the bases. And that's, that's right. <laughs> it, doesn't take, it doesn't take much to cover all the bases and you have done that. Thank you so much, Miss Lashonda. I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank all you, right, Lashonda. That's all I have for you. Ashe, free thinkers. Ashe, may what you say manifest in your life today and every day. Ashe. <laughs> yes. Yes.